How's this for a game ball delivery? The United States Army Golden Knights Parachute Team bringing the game ball into Dorrance Field for Military Appreciation Day. ACC against Patriot League men's lacrosse action. North Carolina welcoming in number six Army here for a really special afternoon of lacrosse. Hey everybody, thanks so much for being with us alongside our former goalie Nick Kloss. My name is Matt Krause. Well, Nick, this is just a really cool atmosphere. Special day for Military Appreciation Day and a really good game to boot. Yeah, beautiful day here. Army fans in town, UNC pack endurance as well. It's going to be a great one. And then Army fell to BU when they were number one in the country. Then UNC has that little fourth quarter collapse against High Point. So both these teams trying to bounce back here today. Big matchup in the fourth all-time meeting between these two teams. Military Appreciation Day made extra special by Army being the visiting team here. Black Knights on their spring break making the drive down from West Point. We saw the Golden Knights parachute team bringing in the game ball prior to the game. Now we will send it down to the field for a performance of our national anthem by Miss Senior America, Laura Morgan, during Miss Morgan's singing of the anthem We'll see a flyover from four Army Apache helicopters out of Fort Liberty, North Carolina. In 2021, Miss Senior America, Laura Morgan, with the performance of our national anthem, the Apache helicopters flying overhead, Dorrance Field, on a really special military appreciation day. And as Nick and I talked about, it is a really important game as well between the Tar Heels and the Army Black Knights. Army, a year ago, one win away from Memorial Day weekend, not just one win, one goal away. They fell to Penn State in the NCAA quarterfinals, bring almost everybody back from that team, but someone that was not on that team because he was out for the year with injury, Jackson Eicher, a strong, physical attackman leading the Army offense. About half a second away from Memorial Day weekend, and Eicher so big, so strong, he can go through you, can go around you. He's great on the catch and shoot game as well. A great finish there on the crease, but an outside shot 
Going in against one of the best goalies in the country. Biggest win of the year for Army over Syracuse there. Iker's going to be big today. How's the game winner in overtime? Meanwhile, for North Carolina, Owen Duffy, number one recruit in the country. Nick, the hype is real. He's a freshman, doesn't play like one. Leads this team in points. He's the go-to guy on offense. He gets the best pull every single game for this Tar Heel offense. So he's got to go through a lot. He's going to get that again today. He needs a big day if the Tar Heels are going to come out on top. North Carolina in bounce back mode today. Joe Bresci's team suffered a defeat last week against High Point in which the Panthers scored the final seven goals of the game. So they find themselves now six and three. Coach Bresci, the 2016 National Championship winning head coach has a very young group this year. It's still a group that can make some noise because of the opportunities that they've got in front of them. But it starts with this Army team today. Meanwhile, for the Black Knights under Joe Albarisi, 7-1 on the year. They get here off a loss to Boston University. But Nick, they are definitely a team that is capable of making a deep run again this May. They're a fantastic team. And Coach Albarisi is really big on no, I'm not going to say the easy things, but the simple things. Take care of the ball on clears, clear at a high percentage, win, win the battle at the face-off dot, and then after that, win the ground ball battle. They've done that great all year, didn't do it against BU, but if they get it done today, they have a 7-0 record when completing those three tasks. And as Coach Albarisi said, we just didn't do the hard things well in that game against BU. He thought his team was prepared, they were excited, they were ready to play but just came up a little bit short. Change in net for the Black Knights. Sean Byrne making his first start of the season. Matt Chess had started the first eight games, which Alvarese said it's an open competition week in and week out. At the other end, the steady force for North Carolina, Colin Krieg, 54th straight start for Krieg. These are two of the best teams in the entire country at the faceoff dot. Army fourth in the nation, Carolina with its two-headed monster, number one. And the initial face-off of the game belongs to the Black Knights against the aggressive 10-man ride of the Tar Heels. Off we go on a beautiful sun-splash day from Dorns Field. Carolina taking it down quickly. An initial shot saved by Byrne. Andrew Tyre of the Fogo turned aside once again. Break free, and the Tar Heels claim they have one, and they do. It was the face-off guys getting in on the action there. Andrew Tyre, who plays on the wing, he's the other Fogo for this Carolina team, but has been great, knows the faceoff well, gets his own rebound, tries to get it on the other side. Two great saves there from Byrne, and then Wambach just gets the garbage goal. Get ready for that rebound. He was the hockey shot in. Good goal for Carolina. Second goal of his Tar Heel career, Brady Wambach, the nephew of U.S. Women's National Team soccer star Abby Wambach. You know about his abilities at the faceoff dot if you followed lacrosse, but he picks up goal number two, and the Tar Heels lead the game less than 25 seconds in. Well, that was a really quick start. How about that? Faceoff won by Will Coletti. Mid-season All-American is announced by inside lacrosse. Ten in black. He will be a factor all game long for the Black Knights. It's truly two of the best faceoff guys in the country going at it. Just so happens Wambach's doing it in his freshman year. He's second in Division I. So we're going to be looking at that all day. Who can win that battle? Yeah, between Wambach, Tyre, and Coletti, it's three of the top six faceoff guys in the nation all involved in this game. Army on offense for the first time. 7-1 this season. Fell to BU 14-9 on the road. First loss of the year. Shot taken by Jacob Morin. Can really stretch out a defense and stop made by North Carolina. Good stop there by Krieg. Goes low to high, sees it the whole way. Has great hands, great reaction time. Krieg started every game since he stepped on campus for the Tar Heels, so great veteran presence. And if he has a good day, this Tar Heel team plays really well in front of him. 54th career start for the Ward Melville product from Long Island. It's going to be a fun goalie matchup, too. Bernard, he made two good saves. We don't really know much about him, but he's six foot three, a bigger frame. He can cut off your angle really easily, and he can take up a lot of that net and a lot of that shooting space. And Nick, you and I talking prior to this game, we identified that the goalie experience disparity could be a factor in this one. Krieg, the veteran who's been a mainstay in cage all the way back to the 2021 Final Four team, 
And then you have the bit of an uncertain, unsettled situation for Army. Lance Tillman takes a rip, but Sean Byrne quieting the critics early on. Well, Byrne has started really well. He's already got three saves here, so he's showing that he's up for this challenge. The place you may notice it with the inexperienced Matt is on the clears. That's where you really see those differences, and Byrne is just a sophomore, so sometimes those younger guys have a struggle commanding the defense. And even last week against BU, Army just 15 of 19 on clears. Here's Dom Petramala, one half of the freshman dynamic duo for the Tar Heels. Possession will go back the way of the Black Knights here. Yeah, Tillman just getting in the crease, or excuse me, that's McGovern getting in the crease a little bit there, so causing the turnover, and now Army gets to clear. Something Coach Alberici really presses on, being high percentage on the clears here. Army will clear it successfully and go to work on the offensive end. Joe Alberici, 19 seasons at the helm of the Black Knights. He's taken them to the round of eight in the national quarterfinals twice, 2010. And then again last year, knocked off Maryland in the first round of the tournament, came within a goal of beating Penn State. Mission this year is to get back there, take the next step. Reese Burek turns the corner and ties us up at one. Great job there by the West Point offense getting things started. Burek, just simple play there, nothing too complicated about it. Takes it from the other side, gets the pick play, just a step above. Goal line extended, goes five hole bouncer on Krieg. And just a good turn, good shot. Always smart to go low and put it on the grass. 14th of the season for Burek. Three of those 14 came in the road win against Syracuse. Army went early, Carolina going quickly. Tyre lost the ball. That's the downside of going hard to cage quickly after the faceoff violation by the Black Knights. And then the ball slips out of the stick of John Sullivan, and it'll go back the way of the Tar Heels. Great job on the ride there from Owen Duffy, getting it right back after Tyre can't complete it. And Carolina tallies one quickly. Duffy's fired up there, great play. Very similar to what we just saw on the other side from Army. Duffy just taking it from the other corner, going around, he does it without a pick, just gets a step on the defender and goes up high over the 6-3 bird. A great finish with Duffy. What impresses you most about Owen Duffy's game? He shoots out of a cannon on that first step. He's so aggressive, he is so fast, explosive, but really, he runs at 100 miles per hour the whole entire game. He's going at all times and he's just relentless. He's a really tough player to guard for even the best pulls. Loose ball foul, a hold on Army gives possession back to Carolina, another chance to see Duffy go to work. Carolina keeping the three starting attackmen, McGovern, Duffy, Petramala on the field. We will see some Matt Reedy, another one of the very talented Carolina freshmen. Joe Bresci and his staff really like Reedy. Race to the end line. Carolina keeps it. You just watch Duffy this whole game going against Pilot. He's going to have that matchup in this game. And Duffy has been beat up throughout this season. The matchups he has, but he's just so tough for a freshman in this game. DJ Pilot, 20 in black, who Nick mentions. All Patriot League long pole. That Joe Alvarez, says, absolutely erases people. And that's his task today against perhaps the most talented freshman in the entire country. Yeah, going to be fun to watch them battle. Duffy, Duffy won that first one-on-one -on -one matchup. Here's James Matten, converted attackman, starting on the midfield line, 7-1. Matten trying to get the hands free. Ball pops up in the air. Ground ball taken in by the Black Knights. Carolina's controlled the possession early, but Army's able to keep it to a one-goal deficit. Now, the Black Knights working in transition. That was a great job by Christian Mazur, the short stick D mid, 55 in black. Gets under the hands of Matten and just makes him drop that ball. Wasn't allowing him to get comfortable up close. North Carolina needs their midfield to produce today if they want to steal a win. Bailey O'Connor, zero in black, races in. Here is Iker, 
6 4, 220, head of steam, shot bounces wide, Army closest to the sideline. Black Knights will keep it without a shot clock reset. Could you imagine seeing that come barreling <laughs> down the alley at you? I mean, just a huge, strong player and very skilled as well, great with his hands. So much talent and so much size for Miker. Uh, Fellows, the sophomore, 41, had it. Bounces back toward Burek. Burek can't connect with Iker. Rolled out near the midline. And go over, over and back call. Gives it to Tarius. Yeah, good defensive stand there for North Carolina. But looking inside, and Army, so good. What a hit. Crushing hit. That was Johnny Schwarz coming out of the substitution box. Lead the hit on Ryan Nixon, keeping the possession with Carolina. If you want to play with Army, you have to play like that. You have to play tough, and you have to do the hard things well, as we talked about early, because they do those things well. Pilot knocks it away. Cause turnover, A.J. Pilot. Casey Reynolds, short stick D midi, bringing it down. Fellows, hat trick in the quarterfinal a year ago against Penn State. The same high school as Carolina's Lance Tillman, Valor Christian in Colorado. Alex Gikas into the game, 11 in black. There's Burek working on Paul Barton. Burek inside spin, fighting toward the crease. Loose again, picked up, Iker, wave it off. Crease violation on Army. That's Cal Lambert who is down, grasping at his right knee. Yeah, Lambert seems to be in some pain. He went into the crease, so that's why the goal was waved off. And it looks like Coach Alberici is looking at it to see if there's a possible review. As they'll get trainers out to attend to him. Didn't exactly see where the injury occurred, but it seems to be that right knee. That's what at least is being attended to. Don't know anything for certain, don't want to assume. And sometimes, sometimes those are the worst kind of injuries where you can't tell clearly where it happened and guys down grabbing at the knee. Yeah, and you can see those hands on head, not happy about it, not feeling good. And as he gets helped up, wish him all the best. And you see, he just tries to get it and just laying the hit stick there in Geppert. Don't see anything deliberately illegal about the hit there. Looks like he lowered the shoulder. I didn't see the hands too far separated. And just unfortunate there and wishing him all the best and a quick recovery. Sophomore to Victor, New York. Lambert's on the roster as a Fogo, but sees plenty of time on the second midfield line for the Black Knights. Yeah, there's a lot of Fogos in college lacrosse that are pure Fogos, but there's also a ton of them that are fantastic lacrosse players and play in, play in box leagues where they play out on offense and you know a lot of guys have a lot of talent in this sport and are able to face off as well pass was tipped out of the stick of peter toman army will take it back the other direction black knights all of a sudden establishing some possession but unable to level this one carolina has a fogo goal from brady wambach owen duffy also getting in the scoring column early Spiric, who's got the ball in his cross, is the one goal so far for Army. Evan Plunkett, midseason All-American. Skip pass for Morin. Plunkett with the high pick. Morin will roll off of it. Keep an eye on Jacob Morin from distance. That was something Joe Bresci pointed out in our conversation, is how much attention Carolina was going to pay to Morin far away from the goal. Loose ball scrum. Danny Striano, 31 in white, raking it forward. Push back out near the midline. Army recovers, 20 to shoot, unsettled. Iker sails it high. 
And Eicher had numbers there coming from the other side. Bailey O'Connor was there. May not have been fully open, but instead elects to rip the shot. You know, Eicher shooting is always a pretty good chance for the Black Knights here. Yeah, if you're a coaching staff and you've got Jackson Eicher shooting in an unsettled situation, you're going to take that all day long. Yeah, you definitely want it. It also depends on what you're looking for right there. The shot clock was lower, so taking that shot, if that's at 50 or 60, you don't want to take that shot. You want to slow things down, maybe use the numbers in transition, or if anything, pull it out and set up your offense. Carolina doing just that. Quick fade, Tillman, turn, fire, score, Duffy's got two. What a great find there from Lance Tillman. The midfielder gets his eyes up, sees Duffy, they create movement there, get Duffy in front, and fires it home. Lance Tillman with the vision. Owen Duffy fires it in. He's got a pair in the Tar Heels lead. Of the top six teams, the only team you're not playing is the fourth ranked team in the country, which means a lot can change if the Tar Heels pick up a few wins. Imagine they go three and two. They got a pretty good argument to get in the tournament. Carolina has a delayed penalty coming. The Tar Heels won the faceoff. I think we're going to see that it'll be a hold on Will Coletti. Had a big time grasp of Brady Wambach after Wambach won it. So Carolina essentially free money here. They'll be able to take a shot. If they don't convert, they'll get a man up opportunity. Yeah, they can take their time. They love putting Matten behind at X with the shorty because of his experience as an attackman. This offense will always go through Owen Duffy. Took the free shot, turning the corner. Flag comes in. Yeah, just right off the face off. Wambach doing really good, and that's just a full hold. Gets the stick around the shoulder, holds him back. So Coletti's going to take a seat in the box for. 30 seconds here. This is a big man down for Army. Obviously, UNC started pretty well in the offensive end, up 3-1. Duffy's already got two goals. Army's got to stand tall here and try and get some momentum going the other way and then slow things down on the offensive end. I don't think they've really settled in on that side of the ball just yet. So started on defense here. First things first, though, they've got to get a stop. Carolina 11th nationally in man-up percentage. Ryan Levy turned aside. Round ball free for the taking near the end line. And squirts out of play off of Carolina. Army does earn the stop. They can kill off the penalty time now and try and pull back within one. Great job there by John Selvin and Ryan Nixon working together to get that ball back for Army. This is exactly what I said. Two seconds, they kill that penalty. Now trying to get to work, get a successful clear and run something on the offensive end. Laser down the field from the goalkeeper Byrne, connecting with Gunner Fellows. Good vision by Byrne and Cage. North Carolina running man, done that all day. So you got a tie up here with Iker. Iker at X, surveying his options. They'll work it around the crease. Iker, hands free. Krieg makes the stop. Run for the ground ball. No one really looked like they wanted it. Army comes away with it. Plunkett sends it all the way back out to Burek. Burek moving hard down the alley. Skipped off the stick of Fellows into Colin Creed. Just not very crisp here early. The pass is a little off, going off the top of the stick there, intended for Gunner Fellows. And this Army offense is very good. It's a great defensive team as well as they like to, you know, win in the toughest way possible, doing the hard things, as we've already said. Just got to do the little things right. Passing and catching the fundamentals is what it comes down to sometimes. We we'll talked to Joe Alvarez about what he wanted to see improve from the loss against BU into this game against Carolina. That's pretty much what he said. Doing those little things. Morin at the elbow. This is what you wanted to see. They had numbers for a moment, but they had 60 seconds on the shot clock. Slow it down, try and get the matchup, and here's the short stick matchup they want. It's Ryan Spazito against Striano. Spazito, seven in black, grandson of the late great Richie Moran. 
National Champion head coach at Cornell. Morin takes a rip. Stays with Army. Do you see who that popped off of? Is that Creed? I thought it might have been Gepard. It, it ricocheted hard off someone there. I just saw it. It hit a white uniform and then bounced over to the North Carolina bench. So it seems like it went off the helmet there. Morin goes low, flicks it in underneath the stick of Creed to cut the deficit to one. And a nice move short side there to make it a one goal game. So he just gets it right back. He's moving away. The defender's ball watching a tiny bit. So he's able to creep in, get the pass, and then just a quick fake high or maybe the eyes up high, go low against Krieg. A good finish there for Mark, for Morin. Morin back in the scoring column. Game against BU last week, his second scoreless game of the year. Five goal defeat for Army a week ago. Wambach wins the faceoff and flings it over his back to Tyre. Duffy stepping in, missed it wide. Carolina keeps it. Owen oh, Duffy is so fun to watch. You see that there? He split dodge, and it's it's like a basketball player with a nasty crossover. Just immediately splits, has a step on his man, and is able to so quickly get it back to his strong hand and rip it just a little wide. James Matten, sophomore from Gonzaga in D.C. Starting on the midfield unit now for the Tar Heels. Pass goes right into the stick of Byrne. That's a great job by Byrne. You're a goalie. Your job is to stop the ball, but you can still be active on the defensive end. You keep your stick in those passing lanes. Sometimes attackmen forget that you can get that stick out there and snag it. So a good job by Byrne to get the turnover. We were a little surprised, but also not really to see Byrne get the start. Matt Chess in his first year as a starter for Army replacing Knox Dent. Joel Barisi said it's an open competition every week in practice. Yeah, he says it's been an open competition since the start. Chess barely edged out Byrne, and today we thought it would be Chess, but a last second decision to change it up with Byrne, and he's done very well. Five saves on the day already. Urich trying to level us up. Krieg to his knees says absolutely not. That's patience from Krieg. Sees him go down right on that right alley. Just drops down to his knees, a more active goalie, and clogs up the five hole. Less than 90 left in the first quarter. Tar Heels led it 3-1. Most recent goals gone to Army. It's about a 20-second different shot to game clock here for the Tar Heels. Tillman had the great assist on the last tally from Duffy. Like I said, the production for this midfield, this first midfield for North Carolina has to come up and represent here for the Tar Heels. The attack has been everything for North Carolina so far this season. Which is remarkable when you consider how young it is. Two freshmen and then a sixth year senior. There's the sixth year senior, McGovern, transfer from Bryant. Dom Petromala, redshirt freshman, two man game, Ty English weaving in and scores. What a great play there from the Tar Heels. It all starts with good defense on one end, transitioning to offense, and then you get the goal. So here's that save from Krieg, just right down the right alley. He's as patient as you can be on that, drops down, gets it, and then a great two man gang game between English and Petromala. Petromala comes up, drops it down. Just a little toe drag and the finish from English, usually playing some short stick. Demid gets his third goal of the season. Two tallies against Johns Hopkins back in February. Now gets number three of the year here against Army. Coletti will win the face off and give the Black Knights a chance to pull back within a goal before the conclusion of the first quarter if they hurry. Eric's already got one, nice feed, but there were two Black Knights in the neighborhood, maybe a little bit of miscommunication, leads to a ground ball pickup, still time for the Tar Heels. Long bouncer though, handled by Byrne, he'll fling it the other direction. Sailing out of play back to the Tar Heels with under five seconds left. Great job by Carolina there to get a stop. 
before the end of the quarter. Keep momentum in the lead with them, up by two. Military Appreciation Day in Chapel Hill. Joe Alberici and the Black Knights trying to get back into the win column, but it's North Carolina in front by a pair. We've played a quarter of lacrosse in Chapel Hill. Prior to today's game, the United States Army Golden Knights delivering the game ball here to Dorrance Field, drawing oohs and ahs from a fantastic crowd assembled on Military Appreciation Day. Golden Knights being recognized on the fields. Loud applause and waves to everybody in attendance. Really special atmosphere for lacrosse here today. Joao Barisi, the head coach of Army, talking about how Army alum, class of 1982, Lieutenant General Ken Dahl, former lacrosse player, has been kind of the liaison in putting all of this together, making it a really special experience. Driving down, Will Coletti won the faceoff, tried to score, couldn't do so. Black Knights trying to settle things in. Coletti denied once again by Colin Krieg. Interesting decision by Army to go quickly there and try and grab some momentum early on in the second quarter. Yeah, they get the faceoff win, decide to go straight to Cage. And not a bad decision there. You obviously want to cherish those possessions and take care of the ball, especially down two. But when you have the fast break and you got a guy like Coletti who's going to slice through, they're not going to move on him. You might as well take that point blank shot. But Krieg was ready. He's playing really smart today. And he's, he's anticipating the shots and knowing where they're going to go. Really good start for him. Six saves on eight shots on goal for the senior from Long Island. And he's definitely coming off a game, and this defense is a hole for the Tar Heels. Just feeling like they need to get one back after that high point game. Same thing with the offense. They were held scoreless since the third quarter, so trying to show that they can go the distance with a really good Army team. And Joe Bresci said he loved the play of his team the first three quarters of that game. The problem was the fourth when High Point made a big comeback to take their first ever win against North Carolina. And that's the thing about lacrosse. The Tar Heels played three quarters much better than the High Point Panthers. But High Point got the win because they were able to get that fourth quarter comeback. McGovern tipped off the stick of burn. will stay with Carolina on the backup. Nick, from a player's perspective, after you have a game like that, where it seems like not only you're going to win, you might win comfortably, and then it completely flips the other direction, how in the world do you turn the page, especially when you've got such a tough opponent in Army and then the ACC coming next? I think that's when you lean on each other. You lean on your brothers because you're all going through that together and you're all disappointed, but you know, sitting and feeling sorry for yourself isn't an option, it's time to get to work. Owen Duffy, hat trick. And if you think someone wants it, it's Owen Duffy. He's having a phenomenal game, three goals already. I've already said at the beginning, he was our player to watch. You need him to have a big day if they're gonna pull off this upset. Duffy just strong. You cannot just put a stick on him, especially if you're gonna slide. They Army doesn't like to slide. They're gonna hold on. They're gonna let Pilot work the one-on-one, -on -one. but right now, Duffy's getting the better of the match. Fourth hat trick in the last five games for Owen Duffy. Prior to last week, he'd scored four or more, three consecutive games. Longest streak for a Tar Heel since some guy named Chris Gray. Yeah, just some guy. Some guy. Chris Gray, one of the best Tar Heels to play. Led them to a final four and almost on his back. What a performance he had. Now North Carolina's trying to get back up to that level that they had in the late 2010s. Reached that final four in 2021. Probably would have been in contention for another one in 2020 had the tournament not been canceled and the season suspended. Chris Gray, a guy that the Army program knows, he transferred to Carolina from Boston University, arguably Army's biggest foe in the Patriot League this season. BU took him down last week. And Nick, this is a game that Army essentially needs to win to keep the at-large hopes alive after last week's loss. Yeah, they gotta win it to stay in the top 10. Can't drop one here, especially at North Carolina. Dropping that one to high point. Iker, corner rip. 
stays with the Black Knights. Less than 30 to shoot, though. And always getting some good shots. That's shot number 13 on the day, but only eight of those on target. Not a bad percentage, but right now the Tar Heels are 12 of 15, so that's the difference here. Gunner Fellows walled off by Ty English. He can do it all. Scored a goal last quarter. Now playing good deep. Slide arrives. Tend to shoot for Morin. Pops the three. Yep. Toe cover inside. Two seconds left. Can't connect with Fellows. It'll be a shot clock violation back to the Tar Heels. So Carolina gets the goal from Duffy to go up three, now earns a stop at the other end. And you already talked about it, Ty English was huge right there. Won his matchup on the one-on-one. -on -one. You get picked on as a short stick D mid. They want to dodge on you because it's the better matchup. It's the higher percentage matchup. But he does a great job. And then when he does finally get beat after forcing the shot clock down, the slide comes. It's a good recovery, great defense from the Tar Heels. What do you want to see Army adjust to try and win their matchups a little bit better going forward? They're they're not shooting entirely well. Like we've seen Iker with some really good opportunities, just getting it a little over the cage. So just maybe some more high percentage shots. Put it on the ground. Krieg's been really good on bouncers so far, but just keep on firing and try and find those feet inside, cut off ball, get things going on the offensive end. Ryan Levy with the ball in his stick for the Tar Heels. Junior 14 in white. Son of Jenny Levy, the head women's coach at Carolina. Great feed, and Carolina goes up four. Levy with the assist. Johnny Schwarz with his fifth goal of the season. I said the second midfield line really needs to step up for North Carolina in this final stretch if they want to get the win uh, or get some wins down the stretch and maybe go to the tournament. I mentioned for Army, cutting off ball. North Carolina shows how successful it can work. Get caught ball watching. Schwartz on a great cut and a great find from Levy. Johnny Schwartz back in the scoring column for the first time in a while. Last goal March 3rd against Penn. Arguably the biggest win this season for the Tar Heels. And there's a similar mindset for Carolina into this game compared to that Penn game, Nick, because you think about now the Tar Heels drop two in a row. Hopkins and Princeton faceoff violation is going to give it to Army here. But then you come into that Penn game essentially needing a win to keep conversation going nationally. Carolina got it. Now coming off the high point loss, taking on another really good team in Army. Similar story. And that can show the resiliency of this Tar Heel team. You know, they've dropped some that they want to get back. They've ran into really good teams like Johns Hopkins and they're going to see a lot down the stretch, but if they're able to bounce back here, just shows the resilience of this team, and the defense is on point here for North Carolina in the first half. It was against High Point, too, so it may come down to finishing in this one if they can do it here at Dorrance. Built up a four-goal lead, scored the last three in the game. Logan McGovern against John Sullivan, change of direction, work in the crease. McGovern by Byrne. Yeah, Byrne being the big six foot three goalie he is, just is tight on the near side post. Takes away any real option of open net to shoot at. Wrap around. Byrne comes up with it. Army against the Carolina ride. Tillman tumbling forward. Flag comes down, it'll be on Carolina. Army with a free possession, and they'll go man up if they can't score. Yeah, I think that's mostly unlucky from Lance Tillman. He was trying to make a big play, trying to put everything out there on the field for that defensive stand as an O-mid, but just trips him up. Iker right into the stick of Creed. That'll bring play to a stop and get the penalty enforcement enacted. So now a man up opportunity, and one you really need to convert on didn't really love that. Here's the penalty, and you see he was just searching for that trail check, decides to just go for it, and ends up tripping his man there, and Christian Mazur. So gets the penalty. Army really needs this man up opportunity to re-spark the offense. Didn't love that shot from Iker just a second ago. 
really easy save for Krieg. He goes high left side, which is stick side for the lefty Krieg, and just an easy save there. So see if Army can get it done here. It's just the 16th man up opportunity of the season for Army in what's now their ninth game, but they are pretty good. Near 500, can't convert right there, race to the end line, back up, is not there in time, goes to Carolina. I don't know how that didn't go in. That was an amazing find from Iker to get it in for 14 in black, Avi Mel, and I thought he had a doorstep finish and just barely misses, might have clipped the post, but another missed opportunity for Army. 30 seconds left on the penalty for Tillman. And Tar Heels can now kill this off. And the opportunity to take a five goal lead. What's surprised you? What's impressed you so far, Nick, in this one? So far in this one, it's been the offense for the Tar Heels. They seem really tight, really buttoned up. They're finding the right looks. Duffy's playing really well, which obviously is pivotal for this offense. But the defense on the other side, Krieg's got seven saves. He's been huge. The defense is playing very well with Geppert and Barton, as well as Toman, the freshman. Everything's coming together at this time and going right for the Tar Heels. And the opposite's happening right now for Army. Nick Floss loves the opportunity to show a goalie some love. I do, I do, that's very true. We go through it, Matt. It's an easy target if things don't go well, but at the end of the day, it's a team game. 100%. Also, you're getting shot with a pretty hard ball at very high speed. Yeah, there's a reason why your Twitter bio says that you call yourself a former psychopath. Yep. I think everyone's got to, everyone has to be a little unhinged to step in that cave, but it's a very important position. Army grabs one back from the Black Knights. They may not have been able to score on the man up, but they pull back within three. Unsettled situation, firing at home past Krieg. Three goal game. Owen Duffy has been terrific against the top 10 opponent today in Army. Yeah, and what I really saw is a lot of great placement. That one's a great finish, inside close, but look at this. Great feed from Tillman, offside stick, low corner, hardest shot to stop for a righty goalie. And then again, offside hit has to come all the way over. you got to sweep under with that goalie stick. It's hard to get there in time. Perfect placement from Duffy. Three goals on seven shots today. Hat trick for the number one recruit in the nation. Freshman from East Quag, New York, St. Anthony's High School. Carolina off the faceoff violation, going quickly. Petra Mala, sidewinder, bounces away, had the backup from McGovern. Smart shot there by the Tar Heels in a quick, unsettled situation. Try and grab one back. Petra Mala knew he had the backup from his veteran linemate. Yeah, really good shot there. It's really important to think about the backup and making sure with you have McGovern there at X if you're going to take a shot early in that shot clock. James Matten with it. Here's Duffy on the move. Once a fourth. Army comes away with it. Yeah, getting lucky there right off the post. Duffy is firing. He's got that killer instinct today. So now Army back the other direction, back within three against a Tar Heel team that squandered a large lead last week. High Point scored the final seven goals of the game to take the victory here at Dorrance Field. It's a Panther team that's used to knocking off ACC teams. Feels like about every other year they get somebody out of the conference. But the manner in which they did it was downright impressive. Here's Evan Plunkett with his 17th goal of the season, and the Black Knights have scored back to back. And that was just an individual effort there from Plunkett. Has the matchup with Toman, the freshman for North Carolina, and uses the pick. Toman's got to go around. They elect not to switch because they're trying to match coming out and just able to get it goes offside stick this time for the on the lefty Creed. good bouncer there for his 17th last year's patriot league rookie of the year 
Ranked by inside lacrosse as the number 43 player in the nation in their top 50 list coming into this year. Ground ball scooped by Ryan Nixon. All of a sudden, here come the Black Knights. They found another gear midway through the second quarter. Krieg goes low to make a big save. And Krieg's been money low so far. I always talk about you want to put it on the grass, that's what you hear, but another good save from Krieg. Paul Barton. Paul goal! Barton getting in on the offensive action. It looks like he was trying to pass it off. He was looking, he was doing well on the pass break, exactly what you want, move it back, and instead, trying to skip pass, Tyre just gives it right back. He looks for the pass, sees it's covered, and he's like, hey, I'll take a shot. Good placement, goes low, squeaks it in. That's one of those spots where you almost expect him to take it down, give it up, and then he'll peel back, back to the defensive end. Carolina will settle things down, but when he had the open look, why not give it back to him? Yeah, and he, he looked right, and that was Schwarz, who's the LSM for North Carolina, so he would have been passing to a pole anyways, so both of them staying on the offensive end to make numbers in Carolina's favor on the fast break, and it works out. First time Barton scored since the season opener against Mercer all the way back on February the 10th. Saw Ty English score earlier in the game. And be a factor on the defensive end. Barton on Reese Burek. Plunkett who scored a moment ago. Twisting shot by Bailey O'Connor. Army has the backup from Fellows. And that seems like what Army's trying to run. They like Plunkett up top, initiates with a dodge, but then you have the attackman and the other midfielders trying to squeeze in on the crease and find that open feed on the slides. Jackson Iker still yet to score. Yurik, side twister, again stays with Army. Fired off five shots, so he's gotten his looks today. Carolina's just done well defensively. English scoops up the loose change. Just a monster play. Have a day so far, have a first half. Ty English just blowing up his attackman and his matchup there going against Fellows. Great job. English with Guitar Heels fourth goal of the game late in the first quarter. It's another position group, love to show love. Short stick D mids, don't get enough credit. McGovern from X. Inside spin on Sullivan, draws the slide. That allows Duffy to get free, but passes it into traffic, and O'Connor will take it away. You see that a lot from Army. It's not a full slide. It's just hedging over a little bit and then getting right back to your man. O'Connor, coast to coast. <laughs> Bailey O'Connor doing it all there to get through the middle. Up by two, and you see it here. Just give up the ball, and O'Connor off to the races. Has the trailers, and splits away, gets inside, and North Carolina just leaving that middle of the field way too open. So once O'Connor gets a step on his man, it's wide open down Main Street, goes up against Krieg. Army just down by two now. The big pass on the break there was impressive. And that's that's a great tool to have on a fast break. Fake pass, make them think you're going to go one place. That can open you up for a shooting opportunity or maybe even open up a skip pass to the other side to get an easy goal. So timeout called by Carolina. As the Tar Heels sit here up two come up as a program and Syracuse is getting back to that where we've known them to be for so long. It's Carolina's next home game. April the 13th, the Orange. Gary Gate will be here. Andrew Price with the ball in his cross for the Tar Heels. 
Carolina led by two after a quarter 4-2. Scoring's been even 3-3 so far in the second. When Duffy is a hat trick. Pilot's been good as of late. Duffy, like I said, his first step is so quick, but Pilot's been doing a good job to stick with him. McGovern sets the pick, then rolls off the pick and receives. McGovern fighting in, working around the crease. Looking for anything open, but no one there, no cutters. Petromala, a low twister, low percentage shot, Byrne handles it. And Petromala has not been shooting very well. He shot under 25%, I believe a little over 28%, a game ago against High Point. And then the shots he's really taken so far haven't been the most high percentage you mentioned there. That one actually looked like it was going wide before Byrne um, suctioned it up, and then he's had a few more go wide. So just has to do better to find the target here, get a few shots on cage. In our conversation with Joe Bresci this week, a lot of conversation about quality shots. John Thompson, the offensive coordinator for the Tar Heels, and all the work he does with these young attackers in Duffy and Petromala, placing an emphasis on finding quality shots. Here's Alex Geekis for Army back in the game. Iker told you he's been held scoreless today. His sixth shot of the afternoon whistles wide. And I think there's also smart shots and then quality shots. Quality shots goes into placement. If you're going to do it, don't shoot stick side on the goalie. You can just get some popcorn, pop it up, and it's a save. Make sure you're changing your levels. And then a smart shot, too, depends on shot clock and everything. Check out the defense from Leif Hagerup. Five on the timer. Here comes Spacito. Spacito with one, flings it back. Burek's not going to get it off. Shot clock violation. Yeah, just not in time. Burek almost had a fantastic opportunity at the step down shot there, but just great defense from Carolina to get the shot clock. You mentioned Hager up, doing really well. Great short stick teammates from North Carolina today. They're stepping up. Yeah, English, Hager up. Great, great defender, a short stick D mid a Fogo, and a second line midfielder in Shores. Yeah, you need your top line, your top guys to step up here. And Petromal, I already mentioned, needs to find the cage a few more times today if he wants to really be an impact. Right now, it's Duffy's show. So got to do it here. Here's Schwartz, who scored an earlier goal you just mentioned. Twenty seconds left. Logan McGovern against John Sullivan deep in the corner. McGovern, the sixth-year senior, gives it up. Duffy loses his footing. Scooped by Sullivan. Five seconds for Armour to do something. Here's Fournier across the midline. Got a release. Does so. Can't put it on frame. Just a couple of tenths need to tick away to officially close out this first half. And at the other end of the field, Owen Duffy slow to get up after taking that shot, walking gingerly but under his own power as McGovern gives the stick back to him. So Duffy was really frustrated after that shot. Pilot guarding him one-on-one -on -one as it's been all game. Got underneath to lift the hands, I believe, but then you saw Duffy go down and Pilot's stick stayed in the neck area of Duffy and after that Duffy was really frustrated when he picked it up and thought he should have gotten called but no flag there. So Duffy and the Tar Heels will head to halftime with a two goal lead. Carolina trying to knock off a top 10 team at home for the first time since 2021. Been a fun first half of lacrosse between the ACC and the Patriot League. Owen Duffy's got a hat trick and his Tar Heels out in front of visiting Army. 7-5 game at the half in Chapel Hill. Really good defense for the Tar Heels in that first half, but Army starting to figure it out. Going to be interesting now with those halftime adjustments on how each team attacks from now on. Joe Alvarisi made the change in goal, bringing in Sean Byrne for this game. Joe Bresci's Tar Heels, though, with seven goals in the back of the net behind him. Joe A and Joe B on the sidelines today. Two great coaches in college lacrosse, both 
deserve all the respect in the world, and they get it in the lacrosse community. Carolina takes the initial face-off of the second half, fourth all-time meeting between these two programs. Just the second in the regular season and first since 1994. Tar Heels, it's a start of a final five games the regular season that sees them play five of the top six teams in the country. James Matten with the ball in his cross behind for Duffy, who has the hat trick, working on A.J. Pilot. Pilot knocks it free. Pilot right now getting the better of the matchup as of late. He's done really good, got his stick in the hands. Knocking the ball out on Duffy once again. Reese Burek opened the scoring for Army, 24 in black. Evan Plunkett has a tally today. Carolina led it 4-2 after a quarter. Teams played straight up, 3-3 through the second. Shot number narrowly favoring the Black Knights, 24-22, but Carolina with the edge and shots on goal. So we know against High Point, the second half was where problems started for the Tar Heels. So looking for a much better second half here today. Plunkett goes to the doorstep, scores. Flag comes in. It's gonna be an interesting call because I believe Plunkett, we'll have to get another look, but he went straight down the middle and if he fell straight into the goal mouth. If he was pushed, the goal counts, and that's going to be the judgment on the field. And exactly that. So I think the flag was thrown because Ty English has the push. So here's that one-on-one -on -one matchup. Plunkett goes in, and then English just a little bit of a push, and then a little bit of a jump by Plunkett, doing a good job to draw the flag, but gets the goal nonetheless just over top of Creed. Second goal today, 18th of the season for Evan Plunkett. Mid-season All-American by inside lacrosse. What do you know, Army from the depths of trailing 6-2, now within one against a Tar Heel team. And as you talked about, Nick, has those mental lingering demons of last week's collapse against High Point. And what you saw on that last offensive possession from the Tar Heels, they got it to Duffy at X and then just immediately went on the one-on-one -on -one dodge against Pilot. I think you need to see that change. Duffy had a really good first half. He had a good game against High Point as well uh, to start as the whole offense did, but defenses adjust in the second half and they're gonna adjust to the game plan of the Tar Heels, so they'll have to switch it up, get some different looks. Yeah, if you're Carolina, you cannot go single-handedly through Owen Duffy and expect to have success all game long. Trevor Dubner into the game, low shot stopped by Sean Byrne. Yeah, it's too much to put on a freshman. Great check on the ride from Petromala. Dominic Petromala, 77 in white, the son of the Tar Heel defensive coordinator, Dave Petromala. Legendary head coach in his own right at Hopkins. Goes over the head on the ice pick. What a check, don't see that too often. And now another chance for Carolina on the offensive end. Logan McGovern, McGovern with it, has his defender hung up. McGovern, plenty of time. Now starts to make his move against Pilot, who checks it away, back to Burn. A.J. Pilot may have gotten off to a slow start with Duffy having that early hat trick but the erasure defense that he is known for starting to come on display as this game gets deeper on. That is his fifth cause turnover of the game. He is playing unreal right now. And you mentioned it, Coach Alberici said he's an eraser. He's not erasing Owen Duffy at the moment, but, or at least to start the game. But since then, he has just won that battle and even there against McGovern takes it away. Plunkett ties the game. A 5-1 run for Army has leveled us at seven. And just that one end, here's the great defense from Plunkett, gets the stick in the hands and just lifts up. 
perfectly executed on the defensive end, and then going right back to what's worked. Second time, Plunkett has just dodged down the alley. He did it on the right side. On the other end, does it with the left hand here. So a hat trick for Evan Plunkett, his fourth of the season. A four goal game against Rutgers and the big road win against the Big Ten foe back in February. Lombok doing his part at the faceoff X. Can the Tar Heels capitalize? And again, Duffy just cannot beat Pilot, but then on the second effort, turns the corner and does. Oh, and Duffy. It amazes me that this is his first year of college lacrosse, what he's been able to do. So great win off the faceoff by Wongbach, winning that matchup so far. Dodges, great job to pull out, didn't have it, but the re-dodge, and just, he doesn't need that much separation, that's the thing. Gets up, just it has about a stick length, but frees up the hands and just pins it in there. You heard me say, Nick, I was convinced after Pilot walled him off the first time that he was going to try and roll back out of that, take his time, settle things down. Instead, the very impressive Owen Duffy has four goals today, half of Carolina's total. And that's the type of day that you need from your best player if you're going to pick up a win against a top 10 opponent like Army that's been the number one team in the country before the loss to BU. And that's what they're getting out of Owen Duffy. He's going to be a huge player for the Tar Heels for years to come. Number one recruit in the nation this year. Has the ball in his cross now against Pilot. Draws the slide, defers for Matten. Matten stopped by Byrne. Loose ball near the sideline. And pushed back to Sean Byrne to lead the break for Army. Burns been really good down low. Krieg has as well. But Burns taking some to the shin and the legs and keeping it out of the cage. You do it however you can can. And Sean, you can and Sean Byrne with now 11 saves on the day. He just joined us. Matt Chess has been the starter all year long for Army. First year as their starting keeper. But as Joel Barisi said, it's an open competition every single week in practice. Chess coming off a tough game against BU, and Sean Byrne won the starting job this week. You wondered when Army got down 6-2, might the Black Knights consider going back to Chess? But Joe Alberici sticking with Byrne, and he's played well as this game's gotten deeper along. That's what I was just about to say. They might be down, but it is not because of Sean Byrne. He's played a really good game. Plunkett, nice feed, fellows stuffed by Colin Creed. Creed got a great first quarter. Makes a big save to keep the Tar Heels on top. And that's Krieg's ninth now. Just both goalies playing really well. About a 55% save percentage for Krieg, 57 for Byrne on the other side. Carolina clears successfully. Tar Heels now 12 of 14 in that department. Army 16 of 18. With all this talk about Owen Duffy, kind of going back to a conversation we were having a couple of minutes ago, Nick, it's imperative for Carolina to find somebody else from the settled offense group to be able to start scoring here, it feels like. Yeah, it's huge. And that and that's Petromala, really. So you're relying on two freshmen, as English is getting some offensive reps here. You're relying on two freshmen to run your offense and really be a lot of that scoring. I'm looking to James Madden to become a little bit more of a finisher in this one, to give some help to Duffy. McGovern is that quarterback guy who likes to find the feed, so here's Matt and seeing if he can get one. Matt and seven and white, the sophomore attacker last year. Seeing time on the midfield line this season for the Tar Heels. Five on the timer, Petramala up top. Lance Tillman fires it right into Burn. Low shot clock situation, Tillman had to get rid of it. Carolina may be a little bit too patient that trip. Yeah, maybe a little bit. That was a good shot overall. A little far out, so it gave Byrne a lot of time to react. Obviously, one he should have had, and he did. So, want to look for a better option if you're North Carolina, but for getting pushed down to the wire, and also just have to mention a great play, Eamon Murphy, the freshman, with a great defensive play going against Matt and behind on the short stick, the midfielder matchup. Murphy, North Carolina native from Charlotte. Weddington High School in Queen City. 
Ryan Salou, skip pass for Spazito. Quick ball movement for the Black Knights to Burek. Burek drew the slide, back to Salou. Army has the backup. Burek's a beast. He's not as big as Iker, but he's as tough as nails. Goes through that double team there, and they were not sliding with the stick. Frankenheimer came over with the body. Spazito in the alley. Spins free. Flag comes in. It's a penalty on Carolina. Free possession for Army. Iker stopped. Ground ball picked by Frankenheimer, and here comes the penalty. Great save by Krieg there to keep Army off the board as they'll go man up. And that's the easiest call any official is ever going to have. You can see it from you can see it from a mile away. You'll see it here as we get another look. Gepper comes down right on the head. The second you hear that, flag's going to fly, and it's a one-minute man up with Gepper now in the box. Off the one-minute slashing call, Army's man up unit going to work. They are 0 for 1 on the extra man today, as is Carolina. Morin twists it wide. And on the man up opportunity, that's a situation where you can take these quick shots because they're all in, all the defenders are in front of the net. They're going a box and one right now, so you can fire and make sure you have that backup to keep it with. Good shot there from Army. Now get the ball movement, make this defense move and find that open man on a skip. Iker still scoreless today. Iker at the elbow. Up top for Morin. He'll take a look and Colin Creed stonewalls it. And that's another example of in the goalie world, one you should have. It's far out. You have plenty of time to react. They go low. Creed's been really good. Stuff in the five hole lately. Makes a big save on the bouncer there. Finds it at his feet. Final five seconds of the penalty time. Carolina's going to kill it off successfully, dropping Army to 0 for 2 on extra man today. What a momentum swinger it would be if Carolina can tally a goal out of this. Could be huge for this offense and the confidence going in later into the third into the third quarter as this is about where things stalled out against high points. So trying to keep things going on the offensive end. Logan McGovern dancing around against Sullivan, gets free. Ball pops into the air. Dubner is going to get to the neighborhood, and it's Petromalo who eventually picks it. Petromalo racing forward. There's his first of the day. You said it, Nick. Petromalo would need to get involved, and he does. Great job there from Petromala. What a look he had there. And that's what he needs to do. Get to the middle and fire. He's a great shooter, a great finisher, can go through. Great goal, 9-7, North Carolina up here in Chapel Hill. Veteran North Carolina goalkeeper Colin Creek sings to himself between the pipes. Time for us to sing his praises. Hey, Common himself down in the crease, and he's had a great day so far. And you don't always just make them look pretty. Right there off the foot, he had one off the helmet, and there he's been really good tracking it down low. Clogs the five hole, which we've seen multiple times today, already in double digits. Ten saves on the day. North Carolina from, right, from top to bottom right now, getting a lot of great production from the guys that need to and also some of the guys you didn't expect. Carolina has seen offensively four goals from Owen Duffy, Krieg in the double digits and saves. And a Tar Heel team that squandered a big lead last week against High Point saw Army go on a 5-1 run here to tie the game at seven, score the first two goals out of the halftime locker room. And since then, Nick Kriegs made a couple of big saves. Tar Heels have scored two more and find themselves up by a pair. Yeah, it's been back and forth. It's gonna be a tough game and a tough end to this one. Army's not gonna go down without a fight. UNC, obviously a very well-coached team by Coach Bresci. And this offense is starting to feel themselves, see if they can keep it going. Lance Tillman had a great assist earlier in the game. Skip pass to the dangerous Duffy, working his way toward the crease, but lost the ball. The game that Pilot is having today 
is just unreal to start. He's got five Cavs turnovers. He's disrupted Owen Duffy so many times and other Tar Heels alike. It's been a great job on the defensive end for 20 in black. We talked to Joe Alvarisi, the head coach of the Black Knights, prior to the game, talking about the matchup, trying to contain Owen Duffy. He was extremely high on what A.J. Pilot could get accomplished today. Crazy. He's, he has erased people. And while he hasn't completely erased Duffy today, he has kept him from a much bigger afternoon. That's for sure. What a split dodge by Plunkett going hard. Knocked free, and Carolina will take it the other way. Ty English is having himself a great game out of the defensive midfield. Duffy unsettled right to burn. Yeah, really good eat on one end from Barton. Great save. See if it can turn into transition offense for Army. Jacob Morin sails it high. Black Knights have to back up. You gotta go there. Both teams with the fast break opportunity. Barton eats one to the thigh. That results in the fast break for UNC. A quick trigger from Duffy. Burn with a great save. Now you're on the other end. Army can settle back down. And that's the thing. As you get a good stand, you're down by two. You're right here in it. Morin goes hard, pulls Army back within one. Second goal of the day for Jacob Morin off the scoreless game last week in their road loss. Great dodge here from Morin. Just goes down the right side, has the shorty, gets a step inside, and the deception there against Krieg. Krieg guesses low, and Morin goes high, gets the finish. Morin going hard to cage. Joe Bresci told us prior to the game that something that jumped out on film about Army was Morin's ability to really stretch out a defense, to fire from distance. Right He's there, got, he does the opposite. Fires yeah. him close and gets a finish there. Face-off violation will give it to Carolina. Tar Heels starting to create a bit of an advantage there. It's now 12-8 at the face-off X. Petromala going quickly with space. Tillman in the game on the midfield line as Carolina's got that first midfield back in there. Tillman, James Matten, who's got the ball in his stick right now, and the freshman, Andrew Price. McGovern, anything but a freshman. Owen Duffy. Duffy turns off the post. Burn able to pick it up. It is so crazy how quickly Duffy can pull the trigger with, while looking the other direction, he just whips his wrists and just fires with so much velocity. Gets off the post there, a little unlucky, but that close to having five and even six goals, he's been robbed on two. Tally is four, but it could be higher. And that's with Pilot making a lot of great defensive plays. I mean, we're watching a battle of two great lacrosse players. The world knows Owen Duffy. He's the number one recruit in the nation for a reason, but the way in which he's about to further explode on the national scene, playing these big opponents down the stretch this season. It's impressive, and he's going to become a name to know for many, many years to come, as you said. He reminds me, not in the way he plays, but in the way he stepped onto the scene in Connor Schellenberger. Schellenberger did redshirt, which was a difference, but just explodes onto the scene. Like you said, he's going to be a name that you're going to know, just like Schellenberger has become. Not saying he'll have a career as Connor Schellenberger has had a fantastic career at UVA, but a lot to come for Owen Duffy. Trevor Dubner with the ball in his stick. Second midfield out there for the Tar Heels. Additionally, Carolina has made a sub on the attacking line. Matt Reedy, 37 in white, is in the game. And Coach Bresci said we might see Reedy a little more. His role's been going up. He had two goals against High Point on the man up. Starting to become a weapon. Dubner flip out to McGovern. Duffy from distance. One for the thumb for Owen Duffy. He just can't be stopped right now. He shoots at a very high velocity. That's his 12th shot of the day. So shoots at a high clip and just a stinger there. He can put so much behind it, gets torqued behind the ball. 
Back up by two for North Carolina. And here it is, great job to move the ball here. Gets one to McGovern, McGovern is up top. One of the rare times you get Army moving. And when you do that, you have to find the open man. And that's exactly what West Point doesn't want to happen. Duffy with an open step down shot. Beautiful ball movement to get that ball to Owen Duffy. Critical face-off win for Will Coletti in the Black Knights. Coletti on the move himself gets the goal right back. That's just to make it and take it there from Will Coletti, his fourth of the season. And See here, just great job, kick it out. It wasn't a clean win, and it doesn't always have to be. Kicks it out, gets his ninth win of the day, just right down the middle, and that puts Krieg in a tough situation. Coletti in the middle of the field opens up a lot of room to shoot at the cage, puts it on the ground for his fourth goal of the season. And Joel Barisi said, yes, it's a tough matchup for him against this two-headed monster of the Tar Heels and Andrew Tyre and Brady Wambach, but yet against the best, Will plays his best, and he wins another one. And it's Ben Wambach who's taken every draw for this Carolina team at the faceoff X, and Coletti's 9 of 21, Wambach's 12 of 21, getting the better edge here. As we get down to the wire, that matchup becomes more and more important. Eric draws the slide, spins back in, flipped it across. Eicher couldn't handle it cleanly, though. The ball is loose and hoovered up by the Tar Heels. And you want to talk about a player being taken away by the opposing team. Eicher has seven shots, no goals, no assists. He's been erased on the other end, and that's why Carolina's got the 10-9 lead. It's a one-goal lead for the Tar Heels. One quarter to go. Duffy's obviously been outstanding, and then Pilot. 20 in black, who's been guarding Duffy the whole day. He's going to need a great final quarter as the whole Army defense as well. Five cause turnovers for A.J. Pilot. Carolina with the face-off win to begin the fourth quarter. Wambach trying to take it down himself and shares it with Tyre, but Byrne read it the whole way. Yeah, Byrne's been all over those, low to the gut. He is, he's six foot three, which is a great benefit when you're in the cage because just you take up more, obviously. So... He's able to get those low balls, just drops his frame and takes it in the gut. Good save. 15 saves for Byrne, 10 for Colin Krieg of the Tar Heels. Krieg's been especially strong in the low bouncers. Jacob Morin against Hagerup. Gunnar Fellows, late adjustment coming over. Got Fellows free and we're tied. Army. Comes out in the fourth quarter ready. We got a 10-10 game, and this is where North Carolina is going to be tested. Can they hold on in the fourth? Great ball movement, the skip for Fellows, and a quick go. Gets over topside. He only gets a few steps above GLE, so a low angle shot. Gets the better of Krieg there. Gunner Fellows, sophomore at Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Valor Christian product. First goal of the day for him. Army has it tied again. Game was tied 7-7. Carolina went on a spurt. Now Army's got us level at 10 with back-to-back -back goals. An extended face-off situation won by Army. Here comes Coletti with the Tar Heels unsettled. Army on top for the first time today. West Point, first lead of the day. And this all starts with Ryan Nixon, 79 in black, does not give up. He got the original takeaway, puts it on the ground, and then gets the help from Iker. And then it's Galetti getting the finish and not his usual role, but a great job there. Timeout, Carolina, Army with three unanswered. They're on top for the first time it's a unit that's responsible for numbers like this. Yeah, we've talked a lot about the individual battle at the faceoff X, but the wing play comes into it also, as we just saw a moment ago, as Wambach, great ground ball, 
He'll take it himself, dig it off the post. Tyre will scoop it, and Carolina will settle things down. Yeah, great call there from Tyre to slow it down, but the wing play is huge. North Carolina all season, for a lot of the time, has ran two shorties on either side of the wings, and that's because they were winning at such a high percentage, as Coach Bresci told us before the game. Today, they do have a pull on that wing, so really emphasizing the importance of ground balls here, but those two units are doing a real good job in battling here, 14 to 11 in favor of UNC at the face offense. Dominic Petromala looking to turn three, rips one high. Army has scored the last three goals in this game to go ahead for the very first time today. What is the Tar Heels' response? Can they be smart and disciplined? Get a quality shot on frame out of this sequence. Loose ball, free for the taking. Ground ball picked by Army. Ned Lynch right there on top of the play, 36 and black. And that was a good job by the Tar Heels there to make the throw as the flag flies. Might be Duffy on a slash. So we'll get a confirmation here. I believe that's going to be Duffy coming down. He was trailing. Just goes around, doesn't get any of the stick there. Right on the hip. And another man up opportunity for Army, the slashing call. Army 0 for 2 on the man up today. Now they'll get this man advantage situation at a point in the game where the momentum is squarely on their side. For two today, but nearly 50% on the season for Joe Alvarez's squad. Jackson Eicher, their leading scorer. He's been held scoreless today. But other names like Jacob Morin, Reese Burek have gotten involved. Here's Morin from the elbow. Long distance rip had to back up with the man advantage. And this is where North Carolina defense needs to stand tall. We saw against High Point, the fourth quarter was their worst of the day. It was Krieg's worst of the day, too. He's fallen short the last couple of possessions, so need a big stop here to get back where you were. Burek straight away. Back for Eichert, tough angle blocked. This is staying Army's direction, under 20 seconds on the man advantage. Good job there from Cooney to get out on the hand, disrupt Eicher. It's been happening all day. He has not really gotten clean shots. Oh, a slam dunk goal, Gunner Fellows. Great offensive possession, great man up possession. They had just under 15 seconds left. And it's a great look on the doorstep, Burek has it up top. They're running the one man up top. It looks like a 1-3-2 and just the feed. And that's what they want. They want the North Carolina defense to get lost on that man up, be able to sneak up. Fellows just creeps up the crease and has the open shot on the doorstep. Sixth time in the last eight games that the Colorado sophomore Gunnar Fellows has scored multiple goals for the Black Knights. Face-off violation, Army possession. Not great timing there, giving Army the ball right back up by two. Coletti staying on, takes a look. Ricochets away, and here come the Tar Heels. Again knocked free. Petromala, though, there to save it. I understand the pass there from Petromala, trying to take advantage of numbers, seeing if they can get one right back to make this a one-goal game. I think you're rushing it there, though, a little bit. Army was recovering in, got sticks immediately in the passing lane, so that skip pass was through, I believe, two or three guys. Better to hold it right here. They got it back, so great job by the Tar Heels there. Now cherish this possession, 50 seconds on the shot clock. And this is the time where that concept, quality shot, really comes into play. Second midfield's out there for Carolina. Dubner lost it. And I think that's something North Carolina struggled with, and that's where the young inexperience comes in that you see. Trevor Dubner wraps around and pulls it within one. Dubner, the senior, what a shot there. A great turn and rip. 
coming from X. We've seen this a couple times. Army's done it. UNC's done it. They come from the opposite side, make the run, just try and beat their man with the feet. Turn and shot. Offside high against Byrne. A great goal there from Dubner. You and I talked about it with Coach Bresci that this Tar Heel team would need some big moments from the second midfield to give themselves the best chance at winning this game today. They've gotten a goal from Schwartz. They've gotten a goal from Dubner. So far, so good in that department and a big face-off win. And yeah, there it is. Braska with a great ground ball there. Got to keep it on this end, though. They finally do. Andrew Tyre so good at getting that ball to safety. There's a reason why the second Pogo's out there, even though Wambach is the one taking the face-offs. Coach Tyre. Bresci said, not to cut you off, Matt, but he said he's so good because he understands face-offs. He knows where Brady's trying to go, what he's thinking going against that matchup. So it's become a great union there to have him on the wing. Dubner, who scored just a moment ago, why not keep the hot hand in the game? Ten minutes left. Ryan Levy spins it away. Carolina's going to keep this one. And Coach Bresci's been working with that second midfield unit. Anyone who really steps up is available to be in that unit. And right now, Dubner's making his spot. Byrne makes the save on the post. That's an easy one there for Byrne. He's so big, he covers that whole short side on the pipe. So Duffy tries to get around and squeeze it, but it's just popcorn for Byrne. So now a chance for the Black Knights to settle things down. They've already got one ACC road win this season. It was at Syracuse when the Orange were number seven in the nation February the 28th. They trailed until the fourth quarter today. Black Knights team that they are the presumptive favorites in the Patriot League, but essentially need this win today to really feel comfortable about at-large chances if they were to drop the Patriot title game. Creed goes low. He's been strong on low shots all day long. Yeah, you've seen that exact motion Creed just made throughout the day. He just drops one knee doesn't fall to his butt to take him out of the play just in case there's a rebound. Just drops the knee, puts the head down hard, and plants the ground ball on the five-hole shot. His 11th save of the day comes up big there. And you need saves in big moments in games like this, so Krieg steps up and now see if Byrne can answer. Lance Tillman with the ball in his cross. First midfield back out there for the Tar Heels. That's Tillman, James Matten, Andrew Price. Here is Price, one of those highly touted freshmen for the Tar Heels, making his second career start today. Shows you how fluid the midfield group is for Joe Bresci's team. Behind a pick from McGovern. McGovern rolls off the pick and receives. Spins inside. McGovern pushed away. McGovern just does not have an opening. Defended so well by Army. Yeah, doing everything he can there to try and get anything going. Couldn't see a pass. Couldn't even get a step there against Sullivan. And a great takeaway by the Army defense. Gunnar Fellows, two goals to his name today. Every single possession now in this game. You can feel the intensity and the pressure. Jackson Eicher still scoreless today. Knocked free by Geppert. Big play on one and big play on another. Great takeaway. Toman, the freshman, loses it. Now Army racing the other direction. A.J. Pilot. Feeds Fellows, who couldn't settle it down cleanly. Now Krieg picks it up. Finally, we get a loose ball push that gives it to Army and settled down a little bit as we went back and forth three different times. Fellows nearly had a gift on the doorstep, but 
pass doesn't connect. That would have been his second doorstep goal in the last few minutes, had the one on the extra man opportunity just a moment ago. Hey, some of the best players are just players who know where to be on the field and have great IQs. Bell is one of those guys who's been finding the right spots today. And that's this Army team in a nutshell. They know where to be, always well prepared, well coached under Joe Albarisi. Half the shot clock gone, and the Black Knights taking their time getting into the offense. This is Plunkett, spins in on Toman. Plunkett splits two defenders off the post. Striano picks the ground ball. Carolina's going to look to go quickly, but you don't want to force a shot here. Yeah, pulling it out, and here's Army, just they don't give up. Petramala, Petramala turning, and it goes in! Tie game! Dominic Petramala needed to step up here in the second half to get something going. Owen Duffy would did everything in that first half. Here's that great push pass to get it open for Petromala, who goes short side, just dips it low, burn nearly on the desperation drop, getting the save, but Petromala gets his second goal of the day. That's what North Carolina needed. 26 on the season now for him. Game tied up at 12 after Army took a 12-10 lead. Neither one of the goals scored by Owen Duffy. And now a win by Tyre. Shares it off with Duffy. Duffy right into the stick of burn. Tried to go high. Now Army a chance to regain the lead. And in my opinion, I think that's a freshman taking a rush shot there. You have the fast break, which is great, and you want to take advantage of it. But when two guys are coming, and then you have the slot, you have the slide coming to your hands, like I said, taking a jump shot as you fade away high to the goalie stick is not the best shot you want there. You want to hold on to it and hopefully tuck one in to go up. Now you're playing on your heels on the defensive end. Spazito spinning free, couldn't get the angle though. Great slide from Tillman. Take away a goal from Spacito. Tillman five in white. Yurik rips it wide. Fellows had the backup. Sub 30 on the shot clock. Fellows against Hager up. Bounces it into traffic. Rolls into the crease and scooped by Creed. Duffy crosses the midline, has a step on Pilot. Deploys the parachute and will let the proper personnel get on the field. Levy and Schwarz out there with Dubner in the second midfield for Coach Freshie's team. Yeah, he's been going to that second midfield a couple times in a row now. They're producing, so keep going back to him. Schwarz with a goal as well as Dubner. Logan McGovern feeds it out to Dubner on the elbow. High shot, Byrne makes the stop. Possible career day here for Byrne. Great ride from North Carolina. They have a chance to take it back. Into the stick of burn. Army's got five seconds to get this across. And the pass just does so with two seconds to spare. So both teams had chances once this game got tied up. Carolina got a stop. Army got a stop. Sub three. Tar Heels looking for their first top 10 home win since 2021. They beat ninth rate Hopkins on the road last year. And we get a timeout called by Army there first. Be a first ever win against North Carolina.
series is 3-0 Tar Heels, but they haven't met in 30 years prior to today. Sub 40 to shoot for Army out of the called timeout. One timeout left for each team. Eric against Bart. Eric working around the cage. Creed stuffs another low one. I mean, he got a great goalie like Byrne having a day. The goalie on the other side needs to answer, and Krieg's been able to do that. 12 goals against, 12 saves for 50%, doing just enough to keep the Tar Heels right there. Joe Bresci will take his final timeout with just over two minutes to go. One, including this one, and then for Army, they're trying to keep their at-large hopes alive if they don't win the Patriot League. Not only that, Army has not dropped back-to-back -back games since February 18th and 23rd, 2020. It's been a very long time. James Matten with it for Carolina. Logan McGovern behind a pick for Matt. Duffy's pulled all the way up top right now. Burn able to knock it free. Loose ball near the crease. And a called timeout for Carolina leads to a pretty quick shot and an army save. Yeah, so they did initiate through the midfield, then they inverted, brought Duffy up top and went with the midfielder Matten on the short stick matchup. He hasn't been able to get the better of it much today as he's been held scoreless. So a great defensive stand now for Army as they hold the cards at the moment, but still time if they score for North Carolina to get a quick one and even it up if that's the case. The difference is about 23 seconds or so, shot to game clock. Reese Burek with the ball in his stick for Army, who's gone cold offensively throughout this fourth quarter. Burek flings it out. Plunkett scores! Evan Plunkett snaps the drought and gives the Black Knights a one goal advantage. What a player Evan Plunkett is. He's had a great day with now his fourth goal of the day. And the double team comes for North Carolina. And it wasn't a bad double. I actually thought they might get the ball to drop. But a great job for the strength of Reese Burick to get through and then just find Plunkett on a beautiful skip for the step down shot. Fourth of the day for Plunkett. Huge face off. Coletti wins it. Racing behind goal line extended. Timeout Army. That was a huge face off win. We all said it would come down to it. And right there, Coletti just uses the strength to go through Wambach and gets the ball. And now Army really does hold all the cards here. And here's another look at it. He just muscles through it, picks up the ground ball, gets it to safety. He's in the box. Coach Alberici calls timeout. Now shot clock is not a factor. Army most likely will bring, excuse me, UNC will most likely bring Krieg out of the cage, try and double somewhere to get the ball taken away, and if they can do that, trying to even it up, but you're just trying to force a turnover, Army's gonna just play keep away. Under 45 seconds to go. Joe Bresci's team led this game by four early on in the first half, six to two. Army took their first lead of the game at 11-10, 13.53 to go in this fourth quarter. Black Knights built the lead to two. Carolina got it tied up. And Army's first goal in over 11 minutes of game time. 11.07, the drop between the Fellows' goal to make it 12.10 and Plunkett's fourth of the day. Now has Army on top, 13.12. It's been a great game. It's been a beautiful day. I mean, you couldn't ask for anything more for some college lacrosse on a Saturday, especially here at noon. And then you got a great two o'clock game on ACC Network as well to enjoy. And it's been a great one. Army now in the lead. Seeing if North Carolina can battle back, push this one to overtime. And very similar to what they saw last week against High Point. 
weren't able to get it on a final shot. This time they have to earn that final shot back. What it's worth, Army's 13 goals. If Carolina is able to force a turnover here, get it tied, and somehow win it, it would be the first time Carolina would have won this season while surrendering double-digit goals. They've given up double-digit goals three times prior to this game, lost all three. Six games, they've held their opponents sub-10, won all six. So as predicted, Krieg out of the cage for the Tar Heels. Low roller bouncer, and it's going to go the way of Carolina. And that didn't go as planned, I don't think. They tried to go after the open net. Burke missed, back up for North Carolina. This could be huge. Step one for the Tar Heels is to clear it. 30 seconds remaining. Here's Lance Tillman. Gotta keep your eye on Owen Duffy. Duffy, top of your screen. Looks like Pilot's trying to lock him off, take him out of the equation. Logan McGovern. McGovern, ball flung free. 14 seconds, English picks it up. English with it. Eight seconds and seven. Carolina trying to tie. English, can he get his hands free? No, he can't. Army stands tall, and the Black Knights win it. Impressive victory by Army and come from behind fashion. The Black Knights go to eight and one of the season. Carolina dips to six and four with a second straight one goal loss at home. Front broadcast partner Nick Kloss, our producer Lord George, director Evan Badler. My name is Matt Kraus. Thanks so much for joining us here this afternoon from Dorrance Field. Army is victorious. 13-12 win for the Black Knights. Farewell from Chapel Hill.